Welcome to the How to Learn Anything course from Plato University, where you're going to learn the science-based tools of pro learners to accelerate your learning, remember more, and master any hard skills. These are the secret techniques they didn't tell you in school. If you're passionate about changing your life with learning, join us at Plato.University to get exclusive content with every lesson. I'm your learning guide, Brandon Stover, and let's get started. All right, technique number 15, overlearning, and specifically in new contexts. Now, overlearning is the idea of practicing beyond perfect. It's a well-studied psychological phenomenon that's fairly easy to understand. Additional practice beyond what is required to perform adequately can increase the length of time that memories are stored. The basic idea of this is you're learning a certain skill and practicing it to the point that you can do it correctly once. Traditionally, this has been shown by doing something like assembling a rifle or going through an emergency checklist, allowing the participant to practice that skill enough times till they can do it correctly once. The time from zero to this point is considered the learning phase. Then they allow the subjects different amounts of overlearning or practice that continues after the first correct application. Since subjects are already doing the skill correctly, performance doesn't necessarily improve past this point. However, the overlearning can extend the durability of the skill. Now, oftentimes in these different experiments, they show that the effectiveness of overlearning tends to be quite short, where it really helps in the first week or two of recalling that skill. However, if you're able to combine overlearning with other techniques that we've already studied, like spaced repetition and proceduralization, the effectiveness of overlearning these things can greatly increase your retention in a certain skill. Overlearning can be an effective method of studying for short-term retention. Now, much of the science that I'm going to link to and studies that I'll show you with overlearning are going to show that it's best in the short term, but we're going to do it in a very specific way that also makes it better for the long term. And by doing this, by integrating skills such as spaced repetition and proceduralization, going through the process of overlearning a skill is going to help you more easily lodge the procedures that you're learning into long-term memory. At Plato University, some of our courses will present material that goes beyond what you need to master. By exposing you to the extra material, it opens you beyond what you need to know for that particular subject. So for example, in our How to Start a Podcast course, we take you through the entire process of launching a podcast, marketing it, and then monetizing it. During that time, you're learning all the skills to be a podcaster and consistently put out content. And those are the core skills that you're going to need, things like recording, editing, marketing, those types of things that are going to be done with every single episode and allow you to create a podcast for the long term. However, we did put monetization in with that, something that comes much later so that you have an understanding of where you're going. So now you're starting to begin to overlearn the material that you actually need to get started, but you have a better and greater concept of podcasting as a whole. So now let's discuss how you can apply overlearning so that it's effective both for the short term and the long term. The first core practice of overlearning that you can apply is practicing something continuously and refining the core elements of a skill, returning back to those foundations that must be applied over and over and over again. So for example, if you're learning a language, rather than spending time overlearning the entire language, learning every word that you possibly could and spending years and years learning that, you could spend time overlearning specific key phrases or word sets that you know will commonly be used when you're speaking to another person. By overlearning these things, you start to bake them into your long-term memory, into that procedural memory, and they can become more automatic. This approach often works well when paired with some kind of immersion or working on extensive projects after the initial learning phase has been completed. The shift from learning to doing actually involves a deeper, subtler form of learning, which shouldn't be discounted as simply applying previously learned knowledge. So by applying this knowledge into new contexts, you're engaging in the process of overlearning. The second strategy is advanced practice, going one level above a certain set of skills so that the core parts of the lower level skills are overlearned as one applies them in more difficult domains. One study of algebra students demonstrated this second strategy. Most students who had taken an algebra class and were retested years later had often forgotten large amounts of information that they had learned previously. Now this could have been either because the information was truly lost or simply because they had forgotten the cues in order to solve problems. 
Interestingly, this rate of forgetting was the same for better and poorer performing students. Better students retained more than the weaker ones, but the rate at which they had forgotten the information was the same. Now in this study, one group did not show such a steep decline in forgetting information. And these were the students that had taken calculus, which is one step above the algebra that they had learned. This suggests that moving up a level to a more advanced skill enabled the earlier skill to be overlearned, thus preventing some of the forgetting. Now, as you already know, this practice of overlearning things is best done when you're using spaced repetition and interleaving that repetition in different contexts. So let's say, for example, you're learning a language. What you're going to be overlearning is common keywords and common phrases that'll be said over and over again. A way to engage in this overlearning process is to space out when you're practicing these words. So rather than trying to learn all the words in one setting, you're going to space out your practice between a few days and maybe even a few weeks, practicing that active recall on each one of those sessions. Additionally, you want to practice in different contexts, interleaving the ways that you would be recalling that information. So maybe sometimes during your practice sessions, you're using flashcards to recall the different key words and key phrases. Other times, you may be actually speaking with a native speaker, but always practicing those key words, overlearning them till you have them embedded into your memory. And doing this in different contexts is the key part of this. As we know, FAR transfer is the holy grail of learning. And FAR transfer occurs when information learned in one context is retrieved and applied in a very different context. Now, FAR transfer appears to be possible in large part because one has learned a group of varied examples and has a firm grasp of the principles that underlie those relevant materials. So here in overlearning, we want to overlearn those key principles that underlie all the rest of the relevant material. But transfer also depends critically on knowing when learned information is relevant. So to facilitate this, one should associate the material with numerous different examples. For example, studying in different places will enhance your ability to later use the information in different contexts. Now, when you're engaging and overlearning something, you can often use different material to help you practice. And what this is going to do is allow you to learn something from as many different perspectives as possible to try and gain complete understanding of those topics. And doing this has a number of powerful benefits. First off, the more you approach something from different perspectives, the better, more holistic understanding you'll have of it. If you think about the different things in your life that you've mastered, it's unlikely you did so by simply reading one book or attending one lecture on the topic. That's because when you're first exposed to something, you're gaining a really fuzzy understanding of how it fits into all the other current information that you hold in your mind. But over time, with repeated and increasingly detailed exposure, your brain is able to figure out where the details fit into the bigger picture. It's able to connect each new piece of information to the rest of your knowledge creating stronger neural networks and therefore a much more complete understanding. So by overlearning, you're creating more and more connections embedding this into your mind. Additionally, this teaches us that it's okay to not understand something the very first time we learn it. The more spaced repetition and overlearning we do, the more likely we are to remember the information long term. Learning this way takes a lot of the pressure out of learning and prevents us from feeling dumb if we don't immediately get something the first time we learn it. So my recommendation today to practice the technique of overlearning is to begin overlearning these learning techniques so that you have them in your toolbox. They become proceduralized for you and you can engage with them in any type of learning that you're doing. Not only will they serve you in learning these techniques here, but they'll serve you in anything that you're learning. Thank you for taking the How to Learn Anything course. To get everything you need to become a pro learner, including advanced resources, personal coaching, and a community of passionate learners just like you, then visit plato.university slash courses slash learning and join us for free. Again, that's plato.university slash courses slash learning. This course was produced by Plato University, where students turn passions into purpose and learn skills to change the world. Learn more at plato.university.